We have just had our first casualty. I think we're done. <laughs> is this a sign that our road to Alaska is coming to an end? Find out on this episode of The Wild Winds. All right, we are in Watson Lake, filling up one more time before we make our way over to Whitehorse. Moving along. In case you guys don't already know, this camper has always been a budget project, right? Never been worried about having it be super fancy or perfect. It's just supposed to be functional and get us where we need to go. It's worked really well. Sadly, we have just had our first casualty on the camper. See this tie down here? Well, the other rear tie down it's ripped out completely and it's gone <laughs> so it's a wooden frame so the way this works it's just sort of bolted you can see it's old and rusty this thing's 20 years old and that's what's holding it down just wood so that wood has completely torn out See that? I'm inside the camper. We're no longer protected against like mosquitoes and the elements to get that fixed. Um, it makes me want to upgrade the camper itself and just use all the awesome accessories and whatnot we bought for this so that the new investment is minimal. Um, but in the meantime, I'm not gonna use a whole nother summer to build a new camper um, when we're here to explore Alaska. So I'm gonna figure out a temporary rest of the life of this camper solution, uh, enough to get us through Alaska and hope for the best. <laughs> Same as always. So here's the plan. We've got uh, a 360 e-slot swivel thing. It's tested up to, it's good up to 2,000 pounds, um, of course, which is pretty much the braking limit on all, the, all these other things. Working load on this is 1,600, this one's 1,000. So it's just meant to be a support for the other ones. We're just gonna see how it goes. It should get us back on the road. The reason I got this one is because it's got a backing plate. So I think honestly that this wood would fail before any of this gear. So I that it's that's as good as it's gonna get. That's the best we can do and hope for. That's inside the camper <laughs> right here. And then this has been blown through. It's just plywood as you can see. This is sort of supported by this metal piece, but barely. Um, we're just gonna create a new attachment point and run this thing until it completely falls apart. We'll get a new one. Here's our hole. Um, this will be its own problem. Thankfully, this is still good. And you can see we got some give here until we get to like right here. That's gotta be as good as it's gonna get. Uh, probably goes like this. Definitely get these. I'll go top, I'll go from the bottom on the other side. Get this 
through the wood nice and tight. Alright, so I want you to check this out. Here's our new mounting point. Boom. Alright, here to here. And I'll do that in a second. I want to just go ahead and preface this, jump ahead of any of the comments. I am not by any means suggesting that this is a safe or practical thing to do or that you should do it. Do whatever you're comfortable with uh, for your own safety. This is a solution that's gonna help keep us on the road. And based on things that I've read on various forums, I've seen that people have been able to use ratchet straps successfully for years. Um, and it's not ideal, I know that. But hopefully it works. If we have to make adjustments, we will. I don't really have, we, we don't really have any major alternatives here um, other than replacing the camper or doing massive overhaul on it, which we're not gonna do. So this will keep us going and I'm comfortable with it. Each component of the system I'm using here has a braking strength of 5,000 pounds and a working load of like 1,500. Um, so between the four different tie downs, this should be more than enough, strong enough to hold the camper. Again, the wood under the, underneath is gonna break well before any of these components. That's my assumption. Facing the bench seat that busted through and uh, you can probably see it here that is it's for a chainsaw but I just found a piece of metal that was longer than my elbow to my wrist and uh, it's perfect really strong stuff so got some hardware we're gonna secure it in place and then I might put some foam here or something definitely just gonna tape this up the same way we've taped up everything on this camper which is a so-so solution all right let's do this guys. All right. okay buddy how far that much <laughs> good suggestion Okay, Theo, you ready to use the scissors? No? Okay. Here we go. Here we go. You got Good. it. You got it. I'm going to do it like this this time. So we want to get some overlap. Mosquitoes are coming in that way. <laughs> well, that is what we are. We've got bites everywhere. I found Miss Spray. What, already? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Things have gone wrong. This is what I get for trying to take a video. Alright, we are in Watson Lake. Filling up one more time before we make our way over to Whitehorse. So, moving along. We are at the signpost forest. It's a whole maze. Now I'm sticker post. I really want to find just a channel I've watched and learned some stuff from RV with Tito oh cool yeah he does like DIY RV stuff so back when we were doing the fifth wheel I learned uh, how to do some things from him it's pretty cool I'm looking for the Everlanders though because they're awesome you have to watch their videos see where they put it 
Yeah, I know. Did you see Barbie and Ken over here? So, somebody we saw at a gas station said this is the place with the most stolen contraband. <laughs> true. Very true. I mean, this thing is non-stop. There's a whole other section. Like, I don't even know where Will is. Creative. Unfortunately, we didn't have a sign to put on the signpost for us. Maybe there's a piece of the camper we can rip off and <laughs> put here. The forest is home to red fox, pine marten, red squirrels, and even woodland caribou. It takes at least three times longer for a forest to reach maturity in the north. After a fire about a hundred years ago, this forest is now in the mid to late successional stage. You can hear the falls. In this area, the pioneer shrubs and trees like lodgepole pine, willow, and aspen are being crowded out by the thick canopy wow. of spruce. over here. Just look at these towering spruce trees. They're among the oldest and most iconic residents of the Yukon. The evergreen branches provide a haven for birds and small mammals, while the fragrant needles release a refreshing scent into the air. Mm-hmm. Check out all these adventure mobiles. Pretty cool parking lot.
Should we do it? <laughs> what time is it? It's almost midnight. Yeah. <laughs> Going up is going to be a good workout. Okay. Bear spray feels like a practical thing to have right now. I don't know if he's gone. How close are we? Yeah. I think we're done. <laughs> really? Right. You gotta you gotta say that to the camera, right? I think we're done. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, no. Hold on. Uh oh. And roots. Yeah. Don't break an ankle. Oh, okay. Let's see if you have that same energy going up. Oh, this is it. You'll see. Oh, I'm feeling my knees. My right knee is a lot for me right now. Hey. That one. I mean, it's broken. Oh, a little wiggle. This is the easy part. <laughs> uh, one. Tiny me a little bit, it looks like. <sighs> it is 11 minutes from midnight. <sighs> uh, that doesn't look so bad. <sighs> the wild winds defeated by a puddle. It's okay, like, yeah, we were real prepared. Still a lot of fun though. Still sunset. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so tired. I need water. Me too. You know, I probably wouldn't have worried about bears if we hadn't already seen. Over, so many. <laughs> yeah, over 30 bears in the last like two, three days. They're everywhere. Yeah. Looks like from the top down. 